doing folks? I'm Joe and you're watching Safari Joe's Adventures. In this video I'm going to finish the exterior of the chicken coop. I will be putting on the front porch, connecting up the fence where I took it down, adding a rain gutter and a water catchment system, and then putting the steps on. I hope you enjoy the video as much as I enjoy making them for you, so stick around for a few minutes and you can see how I do it. I don't want to hook my fence back up until after I've installed the rain gutter. That way I've got room to work. I have built the rain gutter, now I'm going to install it on the back of the chicken coop. Well, I've got my toad up here. I think it's 300, 350 gallons, something like that. Now I can design a water capture system off my rain gutter so I can use it for my garden. I have the fence hooked back up to the chicken coop. I installed another post and then I went ahead and took a two by four, screwed it to the edge, painted it, but it gave me something to nail the fence up to the chicken coop. Got this side connected up also. I'm going to be putting some chicken wire down along the bottom. That'll keep critters out and chickens in. That's what's left of the wire that used to be where this coop is. I have taken the piece of fencing and cut it where I put this chicken coop and you can see that it's connected again on both sides. The piece of fence that I cut out right along this fence line where I built the coop is a five foot field fence. It's pretty strong stuff. It'll keep most big animals from digging through it, but we do have some smaller things that could get through these holes. Basically I sandwiched a piece of chicken wire to it with some zip ties and then I'm going to put that along the back side of the coop and then set the one foot by one foot blocks on the top of it and between the two courses of wire fencing and the block I don't think we can get any animals under this coop because if you look at the coop it's raised the back side is only about 11 inches tall but the front side is bigger than that so where I'm going to put this is along this back side I started to do it with a single piece. It's not nailed in, so I'm gonna take it back out and sandwich it with the chicken wire also. And you can see what I'm doing with the block. And that will keep any animals from being able to dig in there. About the only animals big enough to get under there would be raccoons, skunks, that kind of stuff. I think it's too small for coyotes, but it'll keep them out. So that's what I'm in the process of doing. I've got that sandwiched wire put in all along the bottom. You can see one foot by one foot blocks are in there. I've also got some more here. I'm gonna put those on this side. I'm not too worried about the chickens digging out. I just wanna keep some of the splashing of the rain from getting up on this coop. So anyway, we've got this part of it done. The next thing I will be doing is getting this tote put on this spot. I started to level a spot. Once it's leveled, I'll get the tote over here and then just run a piece of rain guttering around to it and we'll have a way to collect the water for our nice little garden over there. Well, it looks like we've got some rain coming in over the mountain, so I didn't get this job done anytime too soon. Sorry about the wind. It's coming in with a rainstorm. Getting a little noisy out. Here comes some more of our afternoon rains. Had to come inside. But it's good for the garden. And just as fast as they come in, they go away. And now that they've subsided a little bit, they haven't quit, they've just slowed down. I went ahead and uh, connected up the rain gutter system, got the downspouts running over here and into my tote. So now the water, instead of draining everywhere else, will drain into the tote and I can make some connections here and run it to the garden or I can drop one of my sump pumps down in there and use a garden hose and water the plants. 
Little side note, I have a neighbor of mine that has some one-year-old laying hens, and she's got a couple of them that doesn't get along with the other ones, and she asked me if I wanted them. And I said, sure, I'll take them. So she's bringing me over some laying hens this evening, three of them. So I had to throw together a real quick nesting box setup. So there's six nesting boxes. That's not going to be the permanent one. I'm actually going to put them back along this wall right here and maybe a couple of three there. But I got my roost up. I got a little bit of straw down underneath it. So I'm ready to accept the chickens. Hello chickens. We have a four foot tall ranch gate going into this chicken pen. This used to be a garden area. We decided to change it into a chicken pen. The chickens can hop through this gate. So I went ahead and took a four foot roll of chicken wire, wired it to the gate. That way it keeps the chickens in and other critters out. I am getting ready to build the front porch on this chicken coop. I've run a string line four foot off of the building. I've got three holes that I've started. I'm using a post hole digger, a sharpshooter, and a regular shovel to dig these. Because of the hardness of the dirt and the difficulty of digging, what I'm going to do, put some of this water in each one of these holes. That's what I did when I built these footers. You could hardly dig in it, but if you pour water in it and let it set, you could dig down about three or four inches. Then you pour some more water in, dig three or four more inches, well, that's what I'm going to do with this. It's going to take me a little while to dig these three holes, but I'm going to go ahead and put some water in it. Makes it easier. I've got the water in each one of these holes, and it's just going to sit there and soak into the ground. Once it's soaked in, I can take the sharpshooter, get down in there. Then we get down to the hard stuff again and put some more water in, repeat it. And you do that until you get your desired depth. I'm wanting to go down about 30 inches. I have my three holes dug for the footers, 29, 30 inches. All of them are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the form so I can pour the concrete. I've got the form set, so tomorrow morning I will fill these three with concrete. Then I will put these saddles in to set the post in. I'll let it set up and then I can build the porch on there. As you can see, I made myself a little cage and put inside this form. A little bit smaller round than the form is. It'll hold the concrete together when it solidifies and make it a little stronger. I have all three of the footers poured, the saddles in for the support post. Once these are dried and set up, I'll disconnect the forms and they'll be ready to build on. I poured these footers two days ago. This will be the third day. I pulled the cardboard off of them yesterday and now they're drying. You're not supposed to build on concrete footers till they've set for at least seven days. And the longer you let them set, the better chance you have of avoiding cracking. They pretty much get most of their strength within the first 28 to 30 days, but I'm gonna wait seven days. This won't be very heavy. It'll just have a small front porch and a little bit of a roof overhang. So as soon as the seven days are up, I will go ahead and build the front porch area. When you first put on these metal roofs, get your first piece on, get it squared. I'm an inch and a quarter down off the edge of the roof here and flush up front. Everything on this is where it needs to be. So I will screw down this piece. And as long as this is square, your whole roof will go on square from this point over.
Well, I've got the metal roof on, and now I don't have to worry about hailstorms damaging it too badly. I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of paint on this framing. It'll just help preserve the wood. When putting your deck boards on, you want a little bit of space in between these for expansion. I like to take a nail, any kind of a nail, this is a concrete stake nail, and just set it in between these like that. Then you can push your plank up against it and you'll have an even gap all the way down in your planking. That way it comes out evenly at the front with the same space in between each board. Instead of a clear stain, I used a solid stain on the front porch area and also on the steps. This here is recycled concrete. It's just like gravel, except it stays together a little bit better than gravel. I put some of this down, watered it, compacted it, set some blocks or some stepping stones on it, built my steps on top of that. That way they can at least stay off the ground. The only thing I have left to do is put the rain gutter on the front and I'm gonna run that around to another tote. I already showed you how that was done on the back side, so I don't need to really repeat this. So that's it, we're finished with the chicken coop. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you take the time to build one yourself. It's really not that hard. Well, there you have it. I have the exterior of the chicken coop finished. You know, building things is really not that hard. If this is something you're interested in and you don't know how to build, it's just simple measurements. There's all kinds of books out there you can get at libraries or you can buy. But the truth is, you learn more by doing it than you do by reading about it. You can always start with small projects and work up to things bigger. I'm gonna start building a chicken tractor. That's just basically a cage you can pull around your yard that chickens can be in. They can be protected from wildlife, hawks, stuff like that. Move it around your yard. They can eat the bugs. They can fertilize your yard. A couple nest boxes in it and uh, you can even leave a chicken in it overnight if you put a little roost or a place for them to stay. They're pretty well protected. And that's a simple project you can start on just to get your feet wet in the building and you can move on to other things. If you enjoy my videos, you find some entertainment value, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I put on videos as often as I can. I try to do them weekly, but sometimes it's every couple of weeks. It's usually something with some type of outdoor activity because I really enjoy being outdoors and it doesn't matter whether I'm building something for one of the animals, hunting, fishing, camping. That's just the kind of stuff that uh, I enjoy. That's what you'll be seeing more of. So anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate your views, your comments, your likes. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section. I will answer them. I'm Joe. You've been watching Safari Joe's Adventures. Thanks again for watching and God bless.